After this explanation of the background to the serpent sacrifice, Seth Sauti continued his narration. During Janamejaya's reign, there were many Gurukulas. The Kulapatis of these Gurukulas taught thousands of disciples. The disciples were educated at the Gurukula and also were provided board and lodging there. As soon as a boy attained the age of eight, his parents would send him to a Gurukula. The father would bestow advice on his son who was leaving for the Gurukula. My child, hereafter, Acharya will be your parent. Honor him. Always engage yourself in useful work. Do not be an idler. Do not quarrel with anyone. The boys used to bear in mind their advice at all times and adhere to it. I shall tell you the stories of some preceptors and disciples of this kind. Listen. Ayodha Dhaumya was a renowned Kulapati. Thousands of Brahmacharis used to study in his ashrama. Every day, hundreds of students flocked to the ashrama seeking the privilege of being Dhaumya's students. But the Guru could not pay attention to everyone. So, he would summon the aspirants one by one, examine them in several ways and choose those with an aptitude. He educated those boys. The boys who sought the grace of the Guru would stay in the ashrama and follow him everywhere. One such disciple was Upamanyu. One day, Dhaumya's disciples were at their studies. The brahmacharis who had come to seek his grace were sitting near him. As Dhaumya was looking at them, his eyes lighted on Upamanyu. He called him, patted him and asked him, My child, what is your name? Upamanyu answered, Guruji, people call me Upamanyu. Dhaumya said, Upamanyu, from tomorrow, take our cattle to graze. Upamanyu had come to the ashram seeking education. But the Guru had assigned to him the task of taking the cows to graze. Upamanyu was not unhappy at all. On the other hand, he was proud that he had earned the grace of his Guru. He nodded in excitement and touched the feet of the Guru. The next morning, Upamanyu took the cows to a distant meadow to graze. This continued for four or five days. Then. The Guru called Upamanyu. He questioned him, Child, have you been looking after the cows properly? Yes, Guru Deva. What do you do for food, Upamanyu? I beg and eat, Master. Upamanyu, from tomorrow, whatever you get when you beg, you must make over to me. Will you? Certainly, yes, Master. Upamanyu bowed to the Guru and went away. From the next day, Upamanyu used to bring whatever alms he had received to the teacher. Two days passed. Once again, Dhaumya sent for Upamanyu. The disciple came and stood before him with folded hands. The Guru scanned the boy's face. There were no signs of weakness or hunger. He questioned him, Child, what are you doing for food? Sir, I go out seeking arms the first time and make over to you whatever I get. I go begging a second time for my food. The master appreciated his truthfulness, but without revealing it, he said, Child, what you are doing is wrong. You are depriving another brahmachari of his food. So, you should not beg a second time. Very well, Master. Upamanyu answered and bowed and went away. Three days later, once again Upamanyu was summoned. Even then, the Guru found no sign of fatigue or hunger in the boy's face. He asked 
the same question the boy answered guruji i drink the cow's milk child that is not right you are taking away the ashrama's share of the milk do not do so yes master said upamanyu and went away 3 days later again dhaumya sent for the boy even then the boy showed no signs of weakness or hunger the master put the same question child how do you feed yourself sir when calves bring the milk of their mothers the froth sticks to their mouths i sustain myself on it again the simple honest answer of the boy pleased the guru but without showing it he said child out of pity for you the calves give away all the milk they have taken in the form of froth so you are actually drinking the share of the milk the calves ought to have do not do so from tomorrow i shall obey master said upamanyu and bowed to him and returned to his duties 3 days passed the sharp rays of the sun was scorching the earth upamanyu was grazing the cows he had been starving for 3 days the teacher had forbidden every kind of food he used to eat hunger was gnawing at his entrails within and the sun was scorching outside and yet he was grazing the cows with the greatest difficulty he was struggling to perform honestly the duty entrusted to him by his guru but as time passed his hunger grew fierce it became exceedingly difficult to bring back the cows which strayed far away as he walked on he saw the leaves of a plant in a shrub unable to bear his hunger he plucked some leaves and gobbled them up but there was poison in the leaves both his eyes were blinded pitch darkness seemed to descend on him all of a sudden and he was terror stricken crying aloud pitiably guru deva guru deva he began to run wherever his feet carried him and as he ran he fell into a dried up well standing in the well he was still repeating the cry guru deva evening fell the cows wended their way to the ashrama the dust raised by their hooves spread everywhere sitting in his ashrama dhaumya was waiting for upamanyu the cows entered in herds but upamanyu who should have followed after them did not appear dhaumya was troubled he could not make out why upamanyu had not come back at once he set out for the forest he looked for him in all the places where the cattle used to graze but there was no sign of upamanyu and as he stood there worried he heard a feeble voice cry guru deva guru deva he walked in the direction of the voice he came to the well into which the boy had fallen he stood near the well and said my child upamanyu how is it you have fallen into the well upamanyu narrated what had happened the guru was deeply moved for the lad had strictly obeyed his instructions he said child do not be afraid stay where you are he went to the nearby river washed his feet drank sips of water empowered with sacred verses and prayed to the celestial physicians the twin ashwini gods he returned to the well and taught upamanyu the ashwini dev tatmaka mantras verses sacred to the ashwinis upamanyu standing in the well repeated the verses with folded hands and prayed to the gods ashwinis because you are the sons of the sun god in the form of a horse and samshna devi you are called the ashwinis you are effulgent like the fire god you assume whatever form you please you have the complexion of gold you are enchanting to behold ashwinis you are the first to visit a sacrifice or yagna 
you herald the coming of other gods that is why rishis and munis first invoke you ashwinis you travel in a golden chariot which speeds faster than the birds you rescue the ancestors in the other world and the devotees you cure blind persons and bestow beautiful eyes you cure skin diseases and bestow an attractive complexion ashwinis you are benefactors the power of the moon resides in water and so you cure diseases through water you ensure that the seven colors in the sun's rays pervade the earth according to the season and so ensure the health of people physicians to the gods i am too humble to do justice to your great traits i have lost my eyes and have fallen into a deep well i surrender to you i cannot recover fully without your grace save me the ashwinis were pleased with upamanyu's prayer they appeared before him held his hand and said child eat this delicacy your sight will be restored upamanyu said gods i cannot eat anything without the permission of my guru his devotion to the guru left the gods speechless dhaumya deeply moved by his words said in a voice choked by emotion child i approve eat the delicacy upamanyu partook of it at once he regained both eyes he prostrated to the ashwinis they raised him from the well and brought him back to his guru upamanyu touched the feet of his guru dhaumya embraced his disciple from that day dhaumya accepted upamanyu as his disciple in course of time upamanyu acquired all knowledge and returned home with the master's blessings